Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Smells like pizza. And that can only mean one thing. Pizza party time! Tim, Courtney, and Juan are having a pizza party. Now they each eat half of a pizza. All of the pizzas are the same size, but Tim ate three pieces. Courtney ate five pieces, and Juan ate two pieces. Huh? How is that possible? Let's visualize it. Okay, here we have the three pizzas. And we can split them in half since we know each of them ate only one half. Tim ate three pieces, so we can split the eaten half into three pieces. One, two, three. And the uneaten half can also be split into three pieces. It looks like Tim cut his pizza into sixths and ate three sixths of the pizza. Now let's do the same with Courtney's pizza. Now remember, she ate five pieces. If each half of the pizza got cut into five pieces, well then there's a total of ten pieces. She ate five tenths of her pizza. And Juan only ate two pieces, which means that he ate two fourths of his pizza. Although each of these fractions look different, we can see that they all represent the same amount, one half. These are called equivalent fractions. The word equivalent means equal in value. Equivalent fractions may have different numbers, but the value of the fractions is all the same. Let's look at how one half can become all of these different fractions. Tim ate three out of six pieces. Well, we can change the fraction one half into three sixths by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by three. One half times three thirds equals three sixths. Remember, if the numerator and denominator are both the same number, it is equal to one. Now you've just multiplied one half by three thirds, which is equal to one. And if you multiply a number by one, it doesn't change, does it? Now that's a fancy property called the identity property of multiplication, which basically states that multiplying any number by one gives you that same number. You probably already knew that, but now you know the fancy name for it. Now let's do the same for the rest of the fractions. We can multiply one half by five fifths to get the new fraction of five tenths. And if I multiply one half by two halves, the result now is two fourths. Now check this out. It brings us right back to the beginning of the story. All three of these new fractions are really equal to one half. Cool, we just made some equivalent fractions. Find the missing numerator. Okay, looks like we have to find the missing numerator. Now the key with creating equivalent fractions is to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same number. That's because the identity property of multiplication lets us change the numbers of a fraction without changing the actual value. Remember that anything times one is itself, right? So, looking at the denominators, what did we multiply four by to get 12? Well, four times three is 12, so it's three. Whatever we do to the denominator, we need to do to the numerator. Three multiplied by three is nine, so that gives us nine twelfths. The missing value is nine. Now, just to be safe, let's draw out these fractions to help us show that we're correct. We know that three-fourths has four parts, with three that are shaded in. We also know that the second fraction has twelve total parts, and we need to find out how many are shaded. And now we can shade in the same amount for the second fraction, and if we draw a line down, we can see we need to shade in nine parts. Looks like the multiplication we did was fantastic. Great job. Now let's keep it going with these equivalent fractions. Okay, we need to find the missing parts of the following equivalent fractions. Well, let's start with part A. Since both fractions have denominators, well, let's see how we can use multiplication to get from 3 to 9. Okay, we multiply by 3. Whatever we do to the denominator, we need to do to the numerator. 2 times 3 is 6. 
Ah, six is the missing number, and two thirds is equal to six ninths. Okay, moving on to part B. Now, this example has both numerators. And so four times what is 20? Uh, five. Since we needed to multiply the numerator by five, we also have to multiply the denominator by five as well. And what times five is 35? Well, seven. The denominator is seven. We could have also used division to find that answer as well, couldn't we? 35 divided by five is seven. Huh, how neat. Okay, next up, part C. Whoa, this one has two unknown numbers. Well, looking at the numerators, how do we get from 30 to 5? Okay, since the numbers get smaller, instead of multiplying, it looks like we're dividing. Mm -hmm. 30 divided by 6 gives us 5, and so that means we can divide 42 by 6 to find our missing denominator. 42 divided by 6 is 7. All right, we found that the fraction 30 40 seconds is equal to 5 sevenths. But let's pause for a second and think about what we just did. It was the first time we divided a number to make an equivalent fraction. Now just remember, multiplication and division are very closely related. They're inverses, or opposites. Now we can use the identity property of multiplication to multiply a fraction by 1 without changing its value. And we can also divide a fraction by 1 without changing its value, thanks to the identity property of division. Any number divided by 1 is that same number. Okay, back to our problem. Now that we have 5 sevenths, we can use that to find our other missing number. Okay, looking at the denominators, 7 times what gives us 63? 9. And that means we multiply our numerator by 9 as well and get 45. Our missing number is 45. Ooh, great work finding the missing numbers. Okay, last question for today. Why is 3 fifths equal to 6 tenths when the two fractions have different numbers? Well, this question doesn't need to be solved. The answer needs to be an explanation. Okay, well, if two fractions are equal but have different numbers, well, then we know that they are equivalent fractions, right? So let's look at the values for the denominators. And if we were to compare 5 and 10, well, we could say that 10 is twice the value of 5. Another way to say that is 5 times 2 is 10. And this means that one fraction is split into twice the number of parts as the other fraction. Look, the first one is 3 fifths and the second one is 6 tenths. So let's compare the numerators now. 6 is twice the amount of 3 because 3 times 2 is 6. It's the same pattern as with the denominators. In order for the fractions to be equivalent or have the same value, the amount shaded for both fractions has to be the same too. Now this doesn't mean that they have to have the same number of parts shaded. If we were to shade in fractions, we could see that they would have an equal amount shaded even though 3 fifths has 3 pieces shaded and 6 tenths has six pieces shaded. This is what makes the fractions equivalent even though they have different numbers. Woo, great job with these equivalent fractions. We were able to see how equivalent fractions are related to each other. We used visual models as well as patterns and multiplication to find equivalent fractions. And our fabulous fractions will continue in the next video. See you then.